In this video, we review how to create and use Azure files. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Raldos. And Azure Storage Account has a lot of functionality. We can use it for many types of data storage, including blobs, tables, file shares, and queues. In this video, we look at using Azure files to create an Azure file share. Before we get started, please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to receive notifications about new content. Check out my courses on Enter ID and Hybrid Identities with Windows AD, Azure Virtual Desktop, and Windows 365 with Intune Management. And thank you channel members, your support is appreciated. Back to it, let's start with what Azure Files is. Azure Files is part of an Azure Storage Account. An Azure Storage Account has a lot of options for storing data, including blobs, as outlined in my last video, as well as tables, queues, and files. This video is on Azure Files. In an on-premises environment, we may use a Windows AD Join server to create a share. That could be as simple as a standalone server with a lot of hard drives, or a couple of Windows servers to provide high availability with a storage area network or SAN device used to store the data. We could even use a purpose-built network attached storage or NAS device to host the file share. These work well for on-premises environments, and technically we could emulate that environment in the cloud by standing up a couple servers with shared storage, but honestly, that would be a waste of resources requiring a lot of management overhead. An Azure Storage Account offers Azure Files. This is a PaaS service for hosting file shares. We don't have to worry about configuring the underlying infrastructure, patching servers, or adding capacity. We just deploy and use the file share. Azure Files provides cloud-hosted file shares. Azure Files supports multiple protocols, including Server Message Block, or SMB. SMB is also called Common Internet File System, or SIFS, in the Windows world. Azure Files also supports the Network File System, or NFS protocol, a protocol popular with Windows devices, and the Azure File REST API. Azure files can be used with Windows, Linux, and Mac clients, as well as with applications using the REST API. Azure files is useful because it allows us to create a file share in Azure without having to deploy the underlying infrastructure like we would on-premises. We can use it to replace or to supplement an on-premises file share. We can even use it to create a hybrid share with the Azure File Sync client. Azure File Sync leverages Azure file shares and an on-premises Windows server to create a local cache of the file share data. In order to use Azure file shares, we need an Azure storage account. There are two types available, Azure standard and premium storage accounts. A standard storage account is built based on consumption. We pay for the storage used and the transactions or reads and writes of the data. There are three different storage tiers for a standard storage account. Transaction Optimize is designed for workloads with high transactions or reads and writes of data. Transaction Optimize has the highest data at rest cost, but the lowest transaction cost. The hot tier is for workloads that may not have a high amount of transactions. It has a lower data at rest cost, but a higher transaction cost when compared to Transaction Optimized. The cool tier is for data that is not accessed frequently. Think of this for data retention where it's not actively used, like backup data or data retained to meet regulatory requirements. The cool tier has the lowest data at rest cost, but the highest transaction cost. The other storage account type is Azure Files Premium. With this option, we pay for the data provisioned, not the amount used. This is similar to buying an on-premises NAS device. We pay for a set amount of capacity and performance. The big difference is there's no hardware to deploy, and we can modify the capacity through the portal. Azure files on a standard storage account have a maximum input output per second, or IOPS, of 20,000. Standard file shares have a limit of 7,152 mebibytes per second of ingress data and 14,305 mebibytes of e egress data. Premium file shares have a maximum IOPS of up to 102,000 400, but that's based on capacity allocated. There is a maximum of 10,340 megabytes of throughput for a premium file share. As shown on the screen, the more capacity we provision with premium, the more IOPS and throughput we get. What does all this mean? Azure File Standard may be cheaper, but it does not have the high performance characteristics of premium. If you need to store some static file data, Standard may work fine. 
and there's three different tiers to choose from with different capacity and transaction costs. If you need high performance file shares, such as transactional data or a location to store FSLogix profile data, that will benefit from the higher performance of premium file shares. Premium also offers a more predictable cost. It's a set cost based on the size allocated. Standard is priced on capacity and IOPS used and can vary from month to month. When it comes to price, keep in mind that there's an option for Azure file reservations. I'm not going into details on reservations in this video, but at a high level, Microsoft offers a discount on some resources, including Azure File Standard and Premium Capacity, when a commitment is made for a capacity over a specified amount of time. The total savings depends on the capacity and the duration of the reservation. Next, we have redundancy. Every storage account includes at least three copies of the data. Standard storage accounts gives us the most options for redundancy with locally redundant storage, geo-redundant storage, read access geo-redundant storage, zone redundant storage, geo-zone redundant storage, and read access geo-zone redundant storage. Previously, the geo-redundant storage options were not available when large file support was enabled on a standard storage account. That's no longer the case. Large file support is enabled by default on new storage accounts, and geo-redundancy is an option. Premium file shares do not support geo-redundancy. They support local redundant storage and zone redundant storage in regions that support zone redundancy. Let's move on to data protection. There are two data protection options with Azure Files. The first is Soft Delete. Soft Delete works on the file share level to protect Azure file shares from accidental deletion. If a share gets removed, we can recover the share within the duration of the Soft Delete retention. This takes place at the share level, not at the folder or file level. Next, we have snapshots. We can take a point in time snapshot of a file share manually or automatically using Azure Backup. We can mount the file share and recover individual files and folders should we need to restore data. We can have up to 200 snapshots per file share and they're incremental, meaning they only capture changes since the last snapshot. That makes them space and cost efficient. However, they do add additional cost to storage. Snapshots are also stored on the same storage account as the protected data. The snapshots are not vaulted to a secondary storage account and are only replicated to a second region if the protected storage account uses geo-redundant storage. We're going to get started with the basics of creating and using an Azure file share next. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified of videos on using Azure file shares with Windows and Linux clients. Let's jump into the Azure portal to get started. Here we are in the Azure portal. Let's start by creating an Azure storage account. You can skip this step if you already have one. Let's search for a storage account. We'll go to storage accounts. And from here, we'll add a storage account. Select your subscription and resource group or create a new one if needed. Give the storage account a name. The name has to be globally unique and use lowercase letters and numbers. Select the region, Central US for this example. Next is where we can define the performance tier. Selecting standard gives us all of the redundancy options. Let's go to premium. That gives us the options for block or page blobs and file shares. Select file shares and then select redundancy. Notice we only have LRS. Change the region to East US. Now we have LRS and ZRS. Central does not support zone redundant storage. For this example, I'll use standard LRS. Go next to advanced. And if we scroll to the bottom, the option to enable large file shares is grayed out. Previously, we had to select the option to enable large file shares. That's enabled by default now. If you selected a premium file share, this option isn't available. Let's go to data protection. Here's where we can set soft delete for file shares along with the retention period. Let's go to review and create. And once validation completes, click create. 
This will take a minute. I'll pause here until it's finished. The new Azure storage account is finished. Let's go to the account to create the file share next. From the new storage account, go to data storage file shares. The share is the network resource that clients use to access data. In a Windows network, the path is typically server slash share. For Azure files, it's storage account slash share. Let's create our first share by going to add file share. Give it a name, share one for this example, all in lowercase. If we're creating an Azure standard file share, we get the option for the access tier. Transaction optimized, hot or cool. We'll use transaction optimized for this example. If we're using a premium file share, this is a second storage account I set up using a premium file share. We'll give it the name share one again for this example. Then we specify the provisioned amount. The IOPS, burst IOPS, and throughput for that size capacity are listed under performance. For example, if we change the provision capacity to maximum for this example, the performance settings change as well. We pay for the amount provisioned with premium, so let's change that back for this example. Also, we can specify the SMB and NFS protocols with premium file shares. Leave it to SMB for this example. We'll go to backup. We're back at the standard file share. For this example, we'll disable backups. Backups allow us to automate the creation of new snapshots for the share. I'll leave a link to another video on backing up Azure file shares below. Let's go next to review. Once validation passes, click create. That creates our file share. Next, we'll enable or update soft delete. From the file share in the storage account, go to soft delete under feature status. Here we can enable or disable soft delete and modify the days the shares stay in soft delete before they're removed. Remember, this only applies to the share. Soft delete doesn't apply to the files and the folders in the share. For per item recovery, it's best to use Azure backups with snapshots. We'll discard the changes. Next, we're going to mount and use the share. And we're going to use the Azure access key for this step. In production, you'll probably want to use Active Directory integrated authentication. Be sure to subscribe and enable notifications for new content if you'd like to see that. To mount the share, first go to the share in the portal, then to connect. There are some warnings on the screen. The client must support SMB 3.0 or higher. That's on recent Windows builds, but may not be added to a Linux or Mac clients. Also, mounting the share in this example requires accessing port 445, the SMB port, over the internet. There are many cases where port 445 is blocked by home, corporate, or even ISP firewalls. This example is using an Azure VM without any port restrictions. There's more information on the screen regarding port limitations. Some use cases may require VPNs and private endpoints to keep traffic off the public internet. Okay, back to it. We'll leave it set to the Z drive and storage account key enabled. Click show script. This is the script we'll use to mount the file share. It has the security token in it, so keep the script secure. We'll copy the script. And from our Windows client, we'll open PowerShell. I'm using PowerShell ISE for this. You could also save it as a script and run the script with PowerShell. I only use ISE for demos because I can see the commands and the shell at the same time. If I'm working on code outside of creating content, I usually use VS Code. Let's paste in the script. The script will mount the share to the Z drive. Let's run net use to verify nothing else is using that drive letter. There are no drives mounted. Let's highlight and run the script. It first runs a test to make sure that port 445 is open, then runs the command to mount the drive. An error message will appear if it can't reach the storage account. We'll run that. It shows it connected successfully. Let's run NetUse again. 
there it shows our Z drive. Let's go to File Explorer next. The file share is listed as the Z drive. From here, we can create files and folders in the share. Once done, we can disconnect and unmount the file share through Explorer. Or if we go back to PowerShell, we can use the net use command with the delete switch. This will delete the Z drive. Let's run net use again. And nothing's connected. That is how to create and mount an Azure Files file share. That's a beginner's guide to Azure file shares. There's more to come on using Azure files with Windows and Linux clients. So please subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. Thanks for watching.